So it is a beautiful 48 degree drizzle day here in uh, Paris, Michigan. And uh, not enough to normally keep me out from going riding, but it is homecoming. And uh, my teenage daughter getting ready for homecoming is enough to keep me going from riding. But she has since left. So I figured I would make a quick video on my 2018 heritage and the uh, upgrades and, and things I've done to the bike just for the heck of it. <clears throat> so like I said, it's a 2018, I bought it 2019 with about a thousand miles. I put about 20,000 miles of my own on it. Um, things I have done to the bike, a lot of cosmetic stuff, but I added the crash bar, highway pegs. I added uh, new floorboards. I think those are the Dominion series. Um, same thing for the brake pedal. I did change the emblem. That's uh, uh, a metal emblem. I just, I got off of eBay. Uh, I did put a stage two torque cam in. Uh, changed out the, the wires. Uh, basically, to be honest, just for the, the orange look to kind of match uh, what I've done elsewhere in the bike, but they're supposed to be high performance plugs. Um, I generally don't ride with the back seat. Uh, my wife rides a, a three wheel uh, like Can Am Rick, so I ride solo, so I just have a little bib on there. This is a aftermarket seat, this is the ultimate seat. When I first got it, <clears throat> I honestly didn't care for it that much. I felt like it was just too firm, but it broke in really nicely. Um, I've gone for all day rides. I think the longest ride I've done at any time, other than just like quick bathroom breaks, was 10 to 12 hours. Um, no, no problem. And then that backrest is also with the ultimate. It just, it just pops out. It's got a little handy dandy pouch on there. They're not cheap. They're, I think I want to say five, maybe 500 bucks for the seat somewhere in there and a couple hundred bucks for the backrest, but really nice. And it, you know, I don't really love the studs to be honest, but it does match the rest of the bike. So that's, that's nice that they have that. Um, I did add the Kahuna heated grips, which is really nice. Like I said, I'm in Michigan, but I ride year round as long as there's not snow or ice. Um, so that comes in handy. Um, <clears throat> that's my uh, Tom Tom mount for a navigation system. That's a quad lock, which I'll probably show in a, another video, but that's a really nice um, foam mount. This one uh, charges. So when you put your phone on there, it automatically charges. And I did add the vibration so if you have an iPhone and you use the quad lock um, the vibration will eventually damage the um, camera on your phone but they have an anti-vibration thing which is basically just you know a rubber gasket thing in there that lets it vibrate um, dampening <clears throat> the vibration um, so I have that uh, I did change the mirrors these are cheap Amazon mirrors um, but they work. I just wanted to complete the blackout. Um, I changed out the rings to, to, to be black. Uh, I did change the um, turn signals so that they're white, like running lights when the headlights are on. And then they flash, you know, amber white when the turn signal's on, which is, which is pretty cool. Those are LED. Um, I got the lowers on there. I had this uh, two-year mission of trying to figure out uh, helmet buffeting, which I did figure out. I'll get into that more later, but I have gotten it to go 100% away. So even if I'm riding 90 miles an hour down the freeway, no buffeting. Uh, a little bit if I if I put my legs out on the pegs, obviously, because your, your uh, legs aren't blocking that wind from underneath, but pretty minimal. Um, <clears throat> there you can see the, the orange plugs. Uh, I did add this right here is for my um, Gerbering heated gear. So I do have heated pants and a jacket liner that you can plug in. Uh, it goes directly to your battery with a temperature controller. If people are interested, um, you know, put something in the comments and I can do a video on that on that heated gear. I've only got a couple rides in so far with that, but I can tell you kind of what, what my thoughts are on that. Uh, added the curved plate, uh, smoked 
turn signals in the back. Um, change the, the rear brake light too. Those are LED. And then I changed, uh, this is just like really like a tin sticker from Harley, but I thought it looked nicer than just the, the chrome. And then I added, it's a different windshield. And you can see in there clearly that I added a vent. So <clears throat> how I solved the buffeting, I tried probably three or four different windshields, different sizes, heights, width. Um, the best was, um, this is a Clockworks. I had a 21 inch and that did a really nice job. You know, it's got the, it's got the flare. So you kind of have this, this wide curve on the side that pushes air. And then it's, you got, you know, you can see you got the flip at the top, which is standard on a lot of aftermarket shields. The 21 inch did a good job, but it was kind of, I'm, I'm about five, nine. Um, and I'm just looking through it depending on my riding position. And I, and I just didn't like that. Um, so I took one of the shorter shields, um, and thinking about this, you know, where the air is coming from. And I just had that, that clean pocket of air right in the rider position. Cause what happens right is the air goes, goes over over your head over here and then you got the wind coming up from underneath and then you just have this void here and so the air rushes in and fills that void and that's what causes the buffeting so by adding the vent that adds air in here not a lot it's not a huge breeze but it breaks that up and now you don't have that turbulence which is why you have these gaps right underneath in the windshield so that air can get through there but it's just it's just not enough so the combination of the the lowers fangs um diverting that air from coming up the wide shield and then the vent had no no buffeting so i felt like that's a win that i can i can ride all day and, and not have my head head wobbling so i think that is everything i've done to this bike um probably over time do a a few more upgrades i want to uh, I did a, a poor man's job of, of blacking out these brackets, but um, that powder coat didn't really stick. I'm going to take it to get professionally powder coated. Um, probably do this uh, bar as well um, <clears throat> just to, to, to finish kind of the, the blackout look and probably the break in shift lever as well. Um, outside of that, mostly just ride it, but... We'll see. All, always, always doing something. That's the fun of these bikes, right? Like, make it your own. So, love to hear what you think about the the, the walk around. Uh, and uh, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. Oh yeah. Also, I should probably talk about exhaust. It can. It came when I bought it with um, uh, SNS Grand National uh, exhaust. Um, wasn't quite loud enough for me. I learned later that. There's actually a baffle you can pull out of those if you have the non-California model. Um, I took the baffle out, but uh, still wasn't quite what I wanted, so I did end up with the tab performance. I have both the zombie baffle and the mid baffle. Um, normally, I ride around with the zombie baffle. It definitely is loud. You, you got to ride with earplugs. Well, you don't have to, but if you like your hearing, you'd ride around with earplugs. Um, if I take longer trips, like multiple day trips, or I'm going to ride all day, something like that. Um, sometimes I'll put in that mid baffle and it's, it's a lot more, um, tamed. So I know people will say, Hey, you don't have a lot of, uh, back pressure there and you're giving up performance. Why the hell would you do a, a stage two and then give some performance away in exhaust, but I like the way it sounds. So, all right. Appreciate it. Thanks.